Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, and I am here today with another comparison video, this time comparing the White Sox to the Baltimore Orioles. And again, the reason I do these comparison videos, even to teams like the Orioles, who are in the East, and the Angels, who are in the West, is because we do play the, those teams during the season. So you want to know what you can expect when those games come up. And we will go over that too, when those games will come up. So now, um, just a quick recap again of the White Sox. We, we have a good lineup coming back for 2020. Lewis Robert will be in center field. Tim Anderson at shortstop, hoping he can repeat the year that he just had. Uh, Yo Yoan Moncada at third base, and we're again hoping that he can repeat the year that he just had at least, and maybe even take a few steps further. Uh, Jose Abreu at first base, hoping for maybe a bounce back from him, although he did have a good year last year by most player standards. Encarnacion, who we just acquired, signed the, signed him to a uh, to a contract. Yasmani Grandal at catcher, who we also just signed in the offseason. Eloy Jimenez to play left field. He had a decent year last year. The batting average in the on base could have been a little higher, but he did hit 31 homers. Um, then uh, you got Nomar Mazzara, who we just acquired from the, um, the Texas Rangers. And then you got the Mendick Mandrigal combination at second. Mendick may start the year at second base with Mandrigal coming up later when his free agency clock won't run, won't start running. And then you got the rotation of Giolito, Keuchel, Lopez, Gonzalez, and Cease. Um, Keuchel having uh, been signed in the offseason as well as Gio Gonzalez. And then we'll see what happens. We got the bullpen over here, and I have Kopech listed at the top of it, but we'll see what happens with that. The White Sox may take it easy with him, even though he's technically, he'll technically be ready for opening day, coming off the Tommy John surgery. The White Sox may take it easy with him because they can afford to with a rotation like this and a bullpen like this, where we just signed um, Steve Ciszek, so it's a pretty it's a pretty decent bullpen, especially if guys like uh, Bummer and Marshall um, and uh, and Johnny Cordero take a few steps forward. And then of course the bench of Lurie Garcia, McCann, Collins, and Adam Engel in the outfield. McCann is a great backup catcher. In fact, we might be able to rest. Um, Grandall a little more than most teams would be able to because we have McCann. So that's a quick recap of the White Sox. Again, a good 2020 headed their way, I think. Um, and now here we have the Orioles. Now the Orioles last year were 54 and 108. And the year before that, they won something like 47 or 48 games. So they've been terrible. I mean, when I was putting this together, I was going to say that the Orioles are at the commensurate point that the White Sox were, but then I looked at the White Sox past records and I was like, the White Sox were never here. <laughs> so, <laughs> at least not in recent memory. Um, in 2017, the White Sox, that's probably the closest that you can get to um, saying where the White Sox were on the Orioles time scale is maybe 2017 but even in 2017 we won like 67 games and we had multiple guys who ha had uh, good uh, hitting seasons so it's not really even a valid comparison because here you've got their lineup their projected lineup for the Orioles you got Hanser Alberto at second who they got from Texas before at the you know before last season began, you got Trey Mancini who was in their system and came up and he's he's a solid player. Um, 
he's yeah he's always good for maybe twenty something to to possibly thirty home runs. Uh, you got Anthony Santander, who was a Rule Five pickup for the Orioles two years ago, um, two seasons ago, and who they kept on the roster um, the entire season. And it looks like he's about to take some steps forward too. He was pretty good. Um, Renalto Nunez at DH. <clears throat> now, Nunez last year hit 244 with 31 homers, so he is a legit hitter. Then you got Rio Ruiz at third base. And Austin Hayes is one of their up and coming guys that's going to play center field for him. He hasn't really gotten any extended look uh, so far in, um, in the majors. So he's going to have some growing pains, probably, um, in addition to whether he can actually eventually live up to the hype, like Jimenez did for us. Um, then you got Chris Davis at first base. He only hit 179 last year, but of course that was an improvement over the absolutely dismal and worst uh, baseball season that any player had, has ever had that he had the year before where he hit... I don't know what it was, 161 or something? Iglesias, they just acquired for shortstop, and he's going to be an upgrade uh, over Richie Martin, who they had played at shortstop last year. Richie Martin having been another Rule 5 pickup for the team, and so he had to stay on the team all of last year. And he played a lot of shortstop, but he didn't hit. He's generally a pretty good defensive shortstop. He just like I said, he can't hit very well. However, Iglesias can hit. He hit 288 with 12 homers last year. And then you got uh, Chance Cisco at catcher. Cisco last year hit, uh, he hit like 205 with 12 homers. Um, <clears throat> he needs to start showing some progress and making some steps forward because the Orioles are really hoping for that to happen. Um, and he's running out of excuses. So, I mean, because he's, he got a lot of exposure last year to the major league pitching. And uh, this year he's slated to possibly be their starting catcher. So now the rotation, you can see I only got four guys in the rotation because according to RotoChamp, they have no idea who the fifth guy would be. And really, we don't even, do we really even know that Cole Stewart's going to be number four? I mean, Cole Stewart last year had a 669 earned run average. So it's not even really... Um, clear that he's going to be in the rotation. But at the top, I mean, you can plan on these top two guys and maybe even the top three. You've got John Means, who had a pretty good late year last year. He had a 369 earned run average and was 12 and 11 for a very, very bad team. Then you got Alex Cobb, who uh, didn't pitch very much last year. He had a 1015 earned run average, but he only had a few starts. Um, then you got Asher Wachikowski, and then, of course, as I said, Cole Stewart. Now, over here, this is the bullpen listing, but a couple of these guys could find themselves in the Orioles' starting rotation. Um, Mikhail Givens is probably going to be the team's closer, but even he wasn't very good last year. I think his ERA was well over four. Then you got Richard Blyer. Then Hunter Harvey. Now, Hunter Harvey could be one of the uh, candidates to fill that fifth uh, rotation spot. We'll see. And then you got David Hess. Now David Hess was in their rotation at uh, at times last year and the year before, but he has had a, a terrible so far um, major league uh, go of it, except for one start where he was pitching a no hitter and. Uh, the manager took him out because he was a young guy and they didn't want to ruin his arm and whatever. But other than that, no hitter, basically he's had a rough go of it. But he has been in the rotation, so we'll see if he can find himself there this year too. Then you got uh, David Fry and Tanner Scott. Tanner Scott's another young guy in their system that uh, has made appearances in the majors and... Um, you can plan on being in the bullpen. Of course, you know, this is not a good bullpen. There, I mean, there's no, you know, there's no planet on which this is a good bullpen. But you, uh, 
you know, the Orioles are, re they're, they're still in their rebuilding. Um, two years ago, when they won like only 47 games, ironically that year they started the year with Manny Machado and um, Scope and some of the other players and were really, they were really trying to make a run at it. One, la maybe one last run, but it just fell apart on them and then they dealt Machado and they dealt um, Scope and um, and 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 also uh, you'll notice that Dylan Bundy is missing from here because Dylan Bundy now is on the Angels. For some reason, the Angels thought it would be a good idea to get Dylan Bundy. So um, yeah, so that's what they were last year. So they're coming off two years in a row where they barely cracked a hundred wins for the two years combined. But they are rebuilding. Um, as I said, there, you know, there are similarities to them <clears throat> now and where the White Sox used to be, although the White Sox were never quite that bad. Um, but they're, they're trying the same experiment that the White Sox have. And um, that's evidenced by the fact they're starting to slowly bring in some veterans to help the, the uh, younger guys along and not just going with the younger guys. For instance, uh, Iglesias, they just brought in, um, and Hanser Alberto was actually, I mean, he had been around a little bit with the Rangers. So, um, it's just a matter of, they, I mean, they, you know, they're, they're, they're planning on some of these guys making a step forward. First of all, they're, they're hoping that Cobb can go back to his days when he was with Tampa Bay, that John Means can continue what he was doing, Wojciechowski and Stewart can take steps forward, but certainly that, you know, Santander, M Mancini, that he maintains what he was doing, that Santander can take some steps forward. Um, Austin Hayes, again, they need to get him the exposure, and really they, they I mean, I, I understand last year they didn't bring him up because they wanted to delay his clock as much as possible especially considering that they knew they weren't going to win for the next two or three years. But if they had brought him up last year, he would have had that exposure. He would have been, um, you know, and he would be in the second year of his versus major league um, pitchers development. But now, if they bring him up and they put him in this coming year, this will be the first year. And again, maybe it doesn't matter because maybe they are still two or three years away. Because they are, if you look at this roster, it's not stacked very much with very good players. Now, as far as the dates that we will play them, we will play them 5-1 through 5-3 in Chicago. And then we'll pay, play them 5-25 through 5-28 in Baltimore. So I will be potentially in a couple of those games. Um, so we'll see about that, but I've noticed, and also with the, it was the same with the Tampa Bay schedule. It's like against the Eastern teams, we only get three games, um, in Chicago, but we get like four or five against the team at their home place. I don't know how fair that really is, but anyway, um, those are the dates that we will play them. So that's, you know, again, seven games which is seems to be par for the course against the other divisions seven games against each of the teams and all in happening in may so um you gotta hope that at least you know for a six and one record coming out of that um but again we'll see it's baseball you never know injuries things happen things don't go as planned sometimes so we'll see but I like their chances against the Orioles this coming year, and we will have to see how it all works out. But right now, that's it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.